blowing up your mind. Words get stuck in my head like gum to the bottom of my shoe. If I don't write them down, I'll never shake them, and they'll continue shaking me. The storm outside was fast approaching, and I knew I would never outrun it. So I did my best to hide away inside of my recurrent dreams and nightscapes. I wish we were better friends, but how would that even work when we both have a fear of intimacy and don't trust love to last? For years I wondered why I wasn't able to locate my soulmate. Then I began to understand, until I like who I am, how is anyone else ever going to enjoy my company? We start from scratch as we build relationships from stardust and sleep studies. Social networking is for the birds if all you ever want is to be left alone. The writing on the wall proves nothing except that someone believed those cave drawings someday may actually prove beneficial or clandestine to another civilization that's doing their damnedest to stand on their own two feet. I need to write what I'm feeling before everything is either lost in absentia or is eaten away by the plaque on my brain. There's a reckoning coming, and I reckon we best all find shelter before the glaciers completely melt and intolerance rings our bell for the final time. Listening to the Rain from Michael Gilmore. Light the pipe, make the nausea go away. I don't believe in Sartre. This is different than the fog of war. I've lived in the trenches with gutter snipe and the jabberwock. My brain is on fire and thinking straight is a luxury I cannot afford. When I was a child, I dreamt of mythical figures. When I became a man, I put away childish things and picked up a quill pen. When I met the one person who knew my mood simply by the t-shirt I was wearing, I knew I could slow down, take off my hat, and stay a while. Opened the patio door and allowed nature to wash over me like closed captioning from a very nurturing and compassionate God. When I was six years old, someone tried explaining the golden rule to me. Even at that early age, I understood that the very notion of doing unto others as you'd have them do unto you is ingrained in every molecule of our DNA, and no explanation was necessary. Sometimes, I dream I'm hanging out at the White Horse Tavern with Dylan Thomas, which I've always found rather strange, seeing how I don't drink, and Dylan Thomas isn't really my cup of coffee when it comes to the company I keep. We rounded the bend without excuses or loss of consciousness. The kind of metal I'm made of is no one's goddamn business. I like the song Tin Man by America. Sometimes when I'm in the coffee shop, I'll hear it playing over the speakers, and before you know it, I'm mouthing the words. Oz never did give nothing to the Tin Man that he didn't, didn't already have.
Excuse me. Say it now. I'm losing my shit. It's running down my legs. Say it now or forever hold your peace. And the poetry came to me like a thief in the night. And it saved me from myself. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. And the moon hangs in the empty sky, spinning its pulp fiction lies. As I wait, as I await another surge of inspiration to kill me dead. I'm not talking about a physical death. I haven't been physical with anyone for so long, I'm not even sure I would know what to do. As I wrestle this existential crisis to its unforgiving, unrepentant conclusion, I swear I'm through blaming myself for not taking responsibility. When a gun was placed against my temple and I was given the choice to either give up names or die a sniveling deserter. We drive through the rain like a country song that's drunk itself into an early grave. We drive until the wheels fall off and burn, and that doesn't even do the trick, convincing us we've pushed ourselves quite far enough. I became lost in the folds of your poisonous chapbooks, long before discovering myself captivated by your smelly sex and obscene gestures of self-gratification and self-hatred. And even that didn't help me to see you for who you really are. I want to say it now, but what if the poetry reveals nothing more than a cathedral full of sheepish believers praying on their rusty knees to God only knows what. I remember the first time I licked your finite pussy and how I did it without a road map or some other GPS device leading me to the X that surely marks the spot. I'm losing my shit. But I guess that's to be expected when I was never, never very good at making up for lost time or going to bed early enough so that I'm ready for a new day and I'm ready for a new way to finally absolve myself of all of, all of these ready-made sins. Sawbones. I want to write another poem. I can feel it in my bones. And you were standing there. It was like a Beatles song. Except neither one of us was dancing. Do you remember when you were on fire? How no fire extinguisher could even begin to put you out? They say to self-combust is not for the faint of heart. And once I saw you go up in flames, I knew exactly what they were talking about. The flames licked your body like lemon ice, and before long, you were gone. My saw bones are itching to get back into the fight. Problem is, I cannot find the ring, and I never was much for wrestling with my shirt off. And you were a dream come true until you became the nightmare I could not handle. We live inside our most hollowed of poignant memories until memory lane becomes a nightmare on Elm Street. I want to write another poem, or at the very least give up the ghost before everything has been said and done, and doing it no longer makes a fucking difference. I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking about you. And I don't, I don't even know who you are. I'm thinking about you, and I don't even have a heart on, because this isn't sexual or cerebral. It just is. 
we skip the light Fandango simply because we have nothing better to do. And that's all right, because sometimes you need to do something before you go crazy from the nothingness weighing you down like a skyscraper or a guilty conscience. I'm thinking about you because it beats thinking about all the bad shit going on in the news and how none of us are safe and nobody seems to have a fucking clue. I'm thinking about you because it beats beating off and going nowhere fast as semen covers my hands, leaving me even emptier than I was before the sunset. I'm thinking of you, but I won't call because I don't want to get into the habit of habitually craving you. You were lying in bed, just about to fall asleep, when the lines came to you like a body needing to be unburied. I have found myself in a similar situation, fighting the urge to ignore the poetry, but knowing it doesn't work like that, because when inspiration calls, you best rise from the coffin and capture the words before they give up on you. I'm thinking about you, in the dark, scribbling down the lines as they crawl out of your black raspberry sorbet eye sockets like perverse maggots hungering for papyrus and glitter witch flesh, leaving me even more craven and desperate than I was before starting this poem. bottom of the well I don't know how we got here but here we are all the same it's chilly and dark and all hope has been vanquished poetry is not a whore or a manservant it's another tool another form of expression like insurance fraud but far more lucrative don't pretend you don't know what I'm talking about because I know you speak the language of love and hate and all of the other squishy emotions existing between the South and North Poles. I remember when we met in the diner on the outskirts of the city. I wanted to order chocolate cake, but you said it wasn't American. So instead, I ordered apple pie a la mode, and I choked it down like all good Christians choke on Jesus' communion wafer. I'm, I'm not intending to be blasphemous. That's just how it comes out when there's a gun to my head and terrorism has become the new patriotism. I'll never forget when we fell down the rabbit hole. But because your name was Alice, you were treated differently. As the Queen of Hearts repeated over and over again, off with their heads. As I did nothing more than simply ask for a glass of H2O. I'll never forget staring death in the hollows of its erroneous face. And how emotionless and unforgiving I felt as I went mad from unsuccessfully trying to feed my head. I don't know what it is about the bottom of this well, but something's telling me I've been here before. The deja vu washes over me like reruns of unaired Honeymooners episodes. As you sit there in the corner of the room like some ventriloquist's dummy that's been left in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. There's something to be said for changing the conversation by simply changing the color of one's stripes. But for some of us, it's not that easy or advisable when the terms dictated are the very same principles you abandoned so long ago. Bound and giggling. Hope you're not ticklish. 
I've always believed I was bound for greatness. Even though I have no clue how that greatness is measured or by who such decrees are handed down. Just returned from my 30-year high school reunion, and maybe I shouldn't be surprised. But I was taken aback by how many alcoholics there were in slobbering attendance. I will not lie. I actually found myself having a good time, as people recognized me and asked me where my red hair had gone. I'm still missing her, but I am an idiot like that. But I am an idiot like that, even though she could clearly give a shit less, how she carpet bombed my heart and left me questioning my very existence. I hate to be so dramatic, but that's what happens when you become intimate with one of the quiet ones who never intended to give you anything but grief. Of course, she put it all on me as she shirked away, as she shirked any and all responsibility and played me like a Jewish Sicilian violin that's permanently out of sorts and out of tune and unwilling to see the discount stores through the burning redolent trees. I've always believed I was destined for something more than just the same old grind here in Cleveland, Ohio, where rock and roll was named and rivers burned for the hell of it. I'm not down for the count, even though I feel like that like that most days because I still have lots of fight in me, and tonight Mike Cunningham told me I was righteous. Let's stop all the infighting and remember what it felt like to be on the side of what's right and can be easily proven as an actual fact, minus all the negative word salad spin. There was a fog, and it enveloped me for longer than I care to admit. There was a war, and it left us spent and desiring a reversal of fortune. There are twenty for hours in a day, and at some point, I am going to pull my head out of my ass and start living again. Breathing in debris, breathing out calamity. Excuse me. A cartoon safe fell on my head. It hurt like an imaginary hell. <laughs> I had it coming, of course. Nothing like karma scorned. I wonder if John Lennon, being such a fucking prick, had anything to do with his undeniable genius. I'm guessing not. And he was just another one of those entitled son-of-a-bitches who believes the world owes them something. Weird. How too often those spraying out so much sunshine are raging inside like a monster machine wiping out the little guy by continually taking snide, cruel swipes at their Walter Mitty souls. Look, I don't care. If you wrote, imagine, there's still no excuse for terrorizing everyone around you with such formidable calculation, like another Svengali serial killer. It's time to call it quits, or maybe it's not. I don't really know. Just about when I was ready to throw in the towel, life reminded me I might actually have a few good years left. I allow depression to cripple me, like Tiny Tim in A Christmas Carol. But what I keep forgetting is, he made the best out of what he was given. Until pushed into the oven at the end of the novella, and used for God bless us everyone, kindling. The Acme Corporation called, and they want all of their foolproof products back. 
Of course, nothing in those cartoons quite came off like it should have. Or did it? Perhaps the inevitable failure of another wily e. Coyote scheme is all any of us have to look forward to. As we breathe in duplicitous debris, 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 and breathe out clouds of calamity, Jane, calamity. Sanity unsubstantiated. Another exterminator it eaten by bugs. I'll read this for Jim. For Al. For Tommy. Robert Loss. Ted Kane. David Emmel. Did I say nudge squidfish? Probably I did. In case I didn't, nudge squidfish. Mike Rep to Ligoa. He's a shaman. Byron Coley. Ted Lee. Sanity unsubstantiated. I already said that. <laughs> God, I wish I was stoned. There's no one to talk to. Not really. And it hurts like hell. And I'm starting to consider my options. My friend found his escape hatch in 1998. Call him J-Man, Jimbo, or Steppenwolf. He'll answer or he won't, and what's the bloody difference? Another exterminator calling it quits because the care was subpar, and he was tired of drinking himself to sleep every night. You want to know how much it hurts? I'll show you. By lifting my shirt and revealing the scars I've weathered. From punching myself in the stomach because I was so frustrated I didn't know what else to do. She said she was on her way home and would call when she got there. Instead of calling, she sat in her driveway making out with her ex-boyfriend because compassion is nowhere to be found on her list. The priest, bishop, cardinal, and pope keep fucking little boys in the ass because, to them, it's all in a day of worship. And it's nice for someone else to be subservient for a change. Some people will read these words as a cry for help, when actually I've been crying in the wilderness for so long. And the words, <laughs> they've still changed next to nothing. We're led to believe Moses was a provocateur when what I believe is he was just another hard-working Joe who one day was chosen by God to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. Burning bushes appear every day if we're willing to suspend our disbelief and open our hearts to real love. Breaking ha breaking rocks in the hot sun, breaking my melon open in the noonday sun. I am not feeling it. If I ever was feeling it, I'm not feeling it now. There is panic. There is unrest. I'm tired after sleeping twelve hours in the same clothes, the same unframed mind. So I am a poet and a Jew. So what? So my apathy is on Red Bull. So fucking what? I'm channeling nothing but white noise. And even the white noise has turned gray. Breaking hearts in the debilitating sun. Money running out of me. I stick my finger up my ass and the coins keep trickling out. Suicide is impossible in these days and nights of impossible odds. 
This is hell. I usually only read 10 poems during these readings, but I'm going to read an 11th poem that I just wrote this evening. This is for Rusty Stone Rock. The fog of war is a superconductor. I am lethal. You are lethal. We're all fucking lethal. It begins at birth. When we are spat out like a bad peanut. It doesn't end when we die. Because the crematoriums only burn the evidence. And the ground hasn't been hollowed since before Adam and Eve suckled on God's grand teat. The fog of war clarifies zip, not a nothing. Because obstructing the truth has always been man's number one plan of attack. Keep everyone and everything in the dark and kill all those who have the audacity to believe in themselves. I am self-righteous. You are self-righteous. We're all self-righteous. And we best get with the plan before corporate greed and Christian hypocrisy burns us at the stake. Or worse, pimps us out to the lowest and most reprehensible bidder. Thank you for listening. Thank you.